Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be going over how to S55 intercooler swap your N54. This really hasn't been done before. I've seen like some talks about it on the forums, but really what this stemmed from was, I have the F80 now, and I was like, let's see how efficient this is. So I did a few polls and compared some numbers after. Air intake temp started at 70, and then like after like a full one, the fourth gear pull, it'd be at like 88 degrees, so, or 85 degrees. So it was like really minimum growth. Then I went back and compared some data from the N54, just from doing logs and stuff down the road. And this one would start at, let's say, I think it was a hunt, right around 100 degrees air intake temp. So the starting points are the same, but really we're looking for the delta over time. That's the important part. Um, it would be like 135, 140 after a pull. So the delta was like 35, 40 degrees for air intake temps, which is like pretty bad. Um, obviously it comes down a little bit, but then you do another pull and it's just kind of working its way all the way up. And once you get too high, you're just gonna start pulling timing and then just losing power. So I was like, what does it take to put an S55 intercooler on an N54? So the first hurdle was just like, is the hood gonna close? So I was like, okay, well, let's see what happens. Man, the hood closes, doesn't hit anything. It hits the wrench that I left in there, but we're gonna ignore that. And when I was looking at the F80, I was like, I think I've seen that intake manifold before. And then I was like, like I think that's literally the N54 manifold. And sure as shit, it's the same part number. So this intercooler literally mounts on the nubs of the N54 intake manifold. So that means throttle body, stock location still. And then I was like, well, if that's the same, that means the J pipe to the intercooler has to be the same. Sure as shit, it's the same. So then you're like, Okay, obviously charge pipes are different, and 50, this is single bottom mount, so mine's gonna be a lot easier. I just have to come up and instead of going forward, I'm gonna go over the engine to these two, so still gonna make a charge pipe. If you had twins, I don't know if that would work. We have a buddy who wants to come over and do some testing now that I, I got a bunch of stock parts off the F80 to work with. So this is water cool, I guess, so we gotta also address that issue. Normally, we're jumping all around. Let's go to the stock setup. This is the stock setup. I'm sure every N54 car guy is used to this. You have this 38 pound monstrosity sitting at the front of your car. I went a little above and beyond. I replaced all of the um, silicone couplers with V-Gen clamps or like direct clamps because I frankly hate boost leaks. Um, I had a forward facing manifold. So this was on there, right? You guys are all pretty used to that. This obviously I can't use anymore but that's fine, I'll just go back to doing the port injection rail underneath the stock manifold, like, I mean, basically half the cars do. I mean, not a lot of cars run the forward-facing manifold. Anyway, um, I had the spacer plate, which has some fancy name that I honestly am drawing a blank. It begins with a P, but it's not Farabolic or, I don't know. This is, uh, this is me looking dumb. I had that, you had to run, that was an option, that if you didn't run, it just hit your alternator. So you have to buy it anyway. Um, so yeah, this was, Kyle, well, we just weighed this. This whole setup was 55 pounds. 55 54 pounds. 54 pounds. And we're gonna go, we're gonna weigh that stuff after, but I can guarantee you it's definitely gonna be a weight savings. Um, so, right, you can't just run air through this tiny little heat exchanger or intercooler because, well, it just heat soak like that thing does. So. This one is water cool. So, more stock parts, baby. So, F80. Yuck. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Should have pressure washed that first, but that's all right. We'll use oh, that. There oh, we go. we'll use the back side. There we go. So, uh, yeah, obviously the F80 uses this in the front of the radiator. Um, and this, in conjunction with the side one, is used to cool the intercooler for charge air. Um, this is a doinky little thing with plastic end caps. Um, surprisingly, the M50, the F82 endurance cars from BMW, like the real GT3 cars, still use this and the factory one for their like 24 hour Rolex cars, which is pretty baffling. Obviously those are limited to 450 horsepower, but still crazy that they use those. We are gonna throw this thing in the trash because it's pretty, Bye bye so now. Gently slide that over there. And we are gonna go with some CSF. If they had paid for this ad, I would have put that right side up, but they didn't. I had to pay. For it. So they get an upside down ad. This baby, she's thick. 
Um, this is a 42 mil extruded core, um, all aluminum end tanks. This is larger in footprint than that one, larger in volume. It's going to be a thousand times more efficient. This thing is actually larger than my engine radiator, which is baffling, but yeah. So plan is to stick this bad Larry right here. And then what we're going to do, we'll, we're going to try to hopefully make it nice so these cross. Then we're going to have engine radiator behind um, to paint a picture of what that will look like. Bumper, normally this hole in the bottom is open for that one. I'm just going to replace that with this. So it's actually gonna have a larger footprint going in, which is always good. You want about 30 to 40%, but what it's not gonna do is take away from the nostrils that control the flow for the actual engine radiator. So this is gonna sit not stock because I pushed everything way forward just to get more Engine, more space between the back of this and the, the engine itself. Opening that up drops the pressure back there. It helps with airflow going across the face of the radiator, which is better cooling. So I'm not going to lose any cooling efficiency for the engine, and I'm going to gain a bunch of efficiency for the new intercooler system. Um, so for the F80, they use just plastic quick connects, just similar to how every coolant hose is done. What we're going to do is bought a bunch of well-on aluminum 10AN bungs. We're gonna cut these off and weld these on. And then we're just gonna run AN hose from here to an electric water pump. So I'm not gonna tap into the stock cooling system at all. We're gonna just run this off a relay and a switch. So um, I can set power levels if I want, but realistically, I'm just gonna run this at 100% all the time. So these have nice 16 AN threads. If I could line up with my left hand, I would be impressed. So boom, then we're gonna have just 10 ANs out. Same thing over here. Just good old vibrant, only shipped me one on accident. Myself, who was it? I don't know. So um, yeah, jump back to the intercooler again. We're all over the place here. Um, these ones are aluminum as well, obviously, so we're just going to cut the middle of the quick connect and weld on the aluminum things as well. And then, yeah, we're just going to mount the water pump down in all of my free space now. Like, I can literally, like, hang out inside the car. I have so much room for activities in here. That. I know. It's pretty crazy. Um, so, reason why, because we posted this on the Instagrams and basically people were just DMing us, like, 40 DMs of just, like, when's the kit coming out? And I'm like... Slow your roll. I don't have a stock front end. Cut that thing off. It's all aluminum tube structure. There used to be more aluminum tubes to support the old radiator in the old one. Hack those bad Larry's off. I'm just gonna have custom mounts for mine. When David watches this video, he's learning that he's signing up to come down and we're gonna just pop out his intercooler and see what would happen. Um, Thank you, David. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> Uh, for N54, obviously you have, you know, your radiator, then your condenser for AC, which I don't have, and then your intercooler like that. Um, everyone runs the seven inch, which is like, I mean, this section up here is, is three inches. So that's thinner than the CSF one. So theoretically, the width is the same. The thickness is thinner. So therefore we should be able to fit a CSF one in a stock car. Now what little plastic pieces are going to get in the way? I have no clue. So will we come out with a kit? Probably not, but I'm here to tell you how you can do it to your car at home. Because realistically, with this whole side being plug and play, any shop can weld you turbo to these two holes. If they can't, your car shouldn't be getting work done there. It's just some basic welding, some ANs here, and you're mounting a heat exchanger in the front, and you're just plumbing three lines, or to the water pump, to the heat exchanger, and then back. Uh, I'm honestly thinking, guys, anyone can do this, so yeah, fingers crossed. I guess I'm gonna learn, right? If I, I could be just biting my bullets, there might be a caption down here when we get 
a little bit farther along in the project if it doesn't work, but fingers crossed, I, I think it's actually gonna work. And then everyone's gonna be like, well, your F80 doesn't have a stock heat exchanger up front. And yes, that is true. So is that data probably a little bit better? Yes, but I'll just, this is for mock-up. I had this from the F80. The guy even told me it leaks, so thanks for the warning, but I'm gonna bolt everything up, run it, and just see what happens, right? Half of this is just making sure it's gonna fit. Also, as I start saying things, F80s don't have a blow-off valve. They have surge valves in the turbo, so I need to run a blow-off valve. So what we're gonna do is the metal, the J-pipe that's plastic that goes from the throttle body to here. I don't need this vacuum port. I run the N54, right, it's just off the throttle body. So I don't have anything that needs to run vacuum off there. So what I'm gonna do is I bought just the blow-off valve adapter. So when I have a metal one, I'll just cut the hole in it and then just weld on the blow-off valve so the blow-off valve will just chill here. So that is one more thing. If you had a metal one, you could definitely just like, well, this places, um, honestly, I think the J pipe will probably be cleaner. And if you, most of the time they sell the blow off valve thing, this thing, it's just literally, it's already shaped like a U to go to a, a three, a two and a half or a three inch pipe. And then, so I just weld that on. It will fit. I'll just put it on the charge pipe and it should be pretty sleek. So I think, am I missing anything? I don't think so. Did you want to talk about that cool new shirt you got on at all, or? Dude, I do have a sweet new shirt on. This is our track day shirt. Pretty nice, guys, pretty nice. We should do a sponsored post for this. Sponsored by ourselves. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Seems Legit Garage. New merchandise in stock. We got these brand new Miami Vice shirts. We got the black and gold short sleeve and long sleeves now. The red short sleeves are back in stock. And then the new tan one for the spring special. This is gonna be our track day we're hosting, April 29th and 30th of this year. So limited edition guys, get it while you can. If you're coming to the track day, you get first come first serve and then the rest is gonna be sold to you guys. So back to S55 swaps. All right, now that you've just bought t-shirts, let's get to cutting. So we're going to hack off these first. This is super professional. Safety first, guys. Yep. So I'm going to aim for the middle of these. So that way, when Sean welds it, he can use this slip. It was kind of formed in to like back the weld. So he has a nice weld surface to weld to instead of just giving him the like poopy thin end. So this should just really just eat. It's almost too easy. Oh, Boom. Yeah. Look at that. It even like fell right into place too. Yeah, crazy. Sean's gonna be like, thanks guys. He might actually be impressed with us for once. Could you imagine? It's a lot to ask for. <laughs> All right, no turning back now, boys, girls. Oh, should we totally do an edit of that? <laughs> no, actually, I don't want it anywhere near the motor. It's well, probably metal. Clean it off, yeah. All right, now Next. Let's, let's see if my 500 bucks instantly goes to waste or not. Start. Top boy. Bingo bongo. God, I love this tool. Love it. Nice and clean. <gasps> Boom. Might have been a little spit in that one, but. All right, now let's cut to Sean doing some welding.
day two, Sean finished welding last night. So we have our 10 ANs uh, on the front mount. And then I got the 10 ANs up here. So yeah, I mean, basically what happens is we're gonna come out of the top mount intercooler and then we're gonna go boop, 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 all the way down to here. And then we'll go across and back up and then we'll go boop, 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 boop into the water pump. The water pump's gonna sit somewhere in here uh, I don't really, I gotta make a bracket, but that's basically gonna be its home. Into the water pump, shoot out of the water pump, and back into here, and then do coolie boy things. So that is basically mocked up. I got some tabs, so I'll just hard mount this. Uh, that's basically where it's gonna live. That's nothing fancy, just kind of cut the existing structure that I had. Um, so that's about all we have for right now. I'm still waiting on the metal J pipe. <clears throat> I am waiting on more aluminum to do a Y out of the turbo to up here. Uh, blow off valve did come in, but obviously without the J pipe, I, I can't really do anything with that yet. So yeah, I think we're gonna call it for episode one, I guess. And then hopefully next time we'll have the material and we can mock that up. And then at least next time we'll be able to put coolant in the car, run the electric water pump, make sure everything like that works. Put a switch on the inside. I don't know if I wanna do a switch or if I just wanna make it power when like the car has engine on or something like that. Haven't really decided that, but I just don't want to forget about it. So might do engine on something like that. So, um, all right. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in guys and I'll keep you posted, but this is looking like a very viable project and realistically not a lot of modifications, kind of a little bit in the front end, but I honestly think that because it's no wider than the radiator, even with the OEM plastics, you could just trim up and be able to mount this yourself. So, Fingers crossed, and we'll keep you posted if this is going to work for more stockish cars. But until then, um, like, subscribe, do all the things the YouTube algorithm tells me to tell you to do, and then... <laughs> you guys better do it. Yeah, you better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, until next time, catch you later. Peace.